Hey guys, how's it going? Going to record this video and do a run through of First John chapter one, and basically just recording this just you know trying the new setup here with the backdrop, recording really easily with the backdrop and all that. So, uh, and honestly, when I do this, I know that I'm probably going to have more questions than I am answers because First John is a controversial book and there's just a lot there. Even though there's only 10 verses in the first chapter, um, there's some controversial verses that I know I've studied a lot, and it's been a while since I've looked at a lot of that, and so I definitely need to do a, a full commentary and study on this. But I'm just going to run through and share with you some of my questions and some of my thoughts, what's in here. So first of all, chapter or verse 1, uh, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled the word of life. And so it says that which was at the beginning of first. Um, and, you know, we see the, the word of life at the end of the verse there, actually. And we know that's referring to Jesus because he's referred to as the word multiple times. You know, the word became flesh in, in the Gospel of John. And um, words capitalized in our King James Bible, uh, referring to Jesus. So speaking of Jesus, that which was from the beginning, and a lot of people, maybe Jehovah's Witnesses, could take this to say, well, see, Jesus was in the beginning. That means that he was, you know, within creation. You know, when God created the earth, you know, Jesus was created first or whatever. And so that's not what that means. Uh that which was from the beginning in this sense means, you know, has always existed, okay, before time. Um, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon. Which I think it's interesting there, it says, which we have seen with our eyes, and it says, which we have looked upon. It's kind of like the same thing there. And then, our hands have handled, and of the word of life, okay. And also, I think that we can kind of understand that he's speaking of Jesus because, you know, our hands have handled and uh, heard him. So, this, you know, I think that, so this kind of, this has to be a person, I guess. Um, and then, you know, why is Jesus referenced to as the word? And that's something that kind of I'm not really sure about right now, even though I know I've looked at it a lot. And a lot of people have different ideas and you know, there's probably a lot of ideas that are okay um, to go along with. But, you know, why is it called the Word? Um, you know, in John it says the Word became flesh. And uh, it's kind of like, uh, you know, he was spoken of in the scriptures. He was spoken of. And... Um, so in that sense, he is the word, it could be, because uh, he was spoken of in the scriptures, prophesied the Messiah. Um, but I'm sure there's lots of other uh, things that people come up with that you know I want to look into again. And I can't really give a real clear answer on what a lot of people would think. Uh, but I think it would have something maybe to do with the scriptures, um, with the prophecy. So verse 2, for the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and shew unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. We show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. And so that's kind of interesting. Is Jesus referenced to as eternal life here himself? And... Uh, that's kind of the idea that I'm getting from this. He was manifested, we think, that's speaking of Jesus. He was with the Father. We see that spoken of in the Gospel of John. And um, so they're showing to you that eternal life, which is manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father, and with his son, Jesus Christ. 
that ye may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. It kind of sounds like um, giving the gospel, you know, that they're declaring uh, Jesus Christ to others, that they may have fellowship with them, and fellowship with God, the Father, and Jesus also. These things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. That your joy may be full. This, then, is the message which we have heard of him declare unto you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. God is light. Let's say that's like an attribute of God. And so, um, I think that light in this, ref in this reference would be like holiness, and, you know, darkness represents unrighteousness. And we're not talking about like physical light here, uh, but holiness and righteousness, I think, is the idea. Um, if we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us, cleanseth us from all sin. So, uh, you know, you generally would get the idea reading here, you know, talking about people who say they're believers, but they're not, you know, following the Lord as we would think they would. And, you know, this can be a verse to kind of bash people or use as like a measuring stick for, you know, if people are saved or not. That's not really, I don't think, the way we should appropriately look at it. But that's kind of the idea that you get from this. We say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie. And so when he says we, it means anybody. Um, and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son, cleanses us from all sin. Um, you know, and there's some things that, that have, doc, there's there different things with doctrines of sin and holiness here that people would take different stances on, and, you know, it talks about cleanses us from all sin, you know, speaking of past, present, and future, but then some people will say, well, that only means it only cleanses you of your past sins when you're saved, but uh, I would say the past, present, and future, all means all in this uh, case here, completely justified in the eyes of the Lord. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. And so I've always thought that that kind of goes against the people who say that they are sinlessly perfect. You know, if they, uh, they're the ones who say that they are without sin. And um, so I don't think that's right that anybody would say that they're completely without sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And, um, you know, I think that that verse is one of the controversial ones, too. And I think that... You know, if we confess our sins, he forgives us. And so some people might say, well, I mean, what if, what if somebody committed a sin and they died and they didn't have time to confess, you know, but they were saved, you know, so then are they not forgiven? Uh, no, I don't think that's how it works. But I think that generally this is talking about salvation initially. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Um, but, you know, and then some people think that it's like a continual, like our walk and, um, maybe it's talking about being cleansed from like the guilt of sin, uh, you know, even though we're already justified, 
But uh, there's lots of different ways to look at that. That's one of the controversial ones here. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. So, I mean, how can somebody be saved if they say that they don't have any sin? They say they're not, they haven't sinned, you know. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. So, kind of the same idea there. Uh, but yeah, that's that. <laughs> I think I'm just going to cut this short here, but uh, I'll continue through the other ones. The rest of the chapters in First John, it's, it's another tough uh, epistle, but... I'll have to do a, a better commentary on it, but I just thought I'd read through that and share that with you guys. Thanks for watching. God bless.